timely, honest conversations about a person's preferences and priorities, including advanced decisions to refuse treatment, a standard good practice in palliative and end-of-life care for anyone with a progressive life-limiting illness. Honest conversations about goals of treatment and escalation planning should be initiated as early as possible so that a personalised care plan can be developed and documented, covering both active treatment and palliative interventions. Families and those close to the person should be involved in these discussions as far as possible, in line with the person's wishes. In the context of COVID-19, a person may become ill and deteriorate quite quickly, so the opportunity for collaborative decision making may be limited or lost. Families may be shocked by the speed of these developments and may themselves be ill or required to self-isolate. Visiting restrictions may mean that they feel disconnected from their loved one. But as far as possible, it remains important to offer these conversations to help ensure that those who are unlikely to survive receive appropriate end-of-life care. For the individual and their loved ones, being kept informed helps to reduce anxiety, even if the healthcare professionals do not have all the answers and even if the conversations need to be conducted behind PPE or over telephone or video call. These conversations can be difficult, but research shows that honest conversations are often what patients and those close to them want the most. When speaking to someone about ceiling of treatment and end-of-life decisions, be clear, honest and direct. If the medical opinion is that invasive treatments are not likely to be effective, ensure that the person understands this. Avoid using vague phrases such as very poorly and be as direct as possible. If the person is sick enough that they may die, or if you think they are coming to the end of their life, make sure you say this in a compassionate but clear manner. Using a framework such as spikes can be helpful in thinking about how best to prepare for difficult conversations about ceiling of treatment and end of life. Think about the setting and the situation to ensure that you're well prepared. Ask about the perceptions, what do people know already, and don't make any assumptions. Make an invitation, ask how much the person wants to know about their treatment and future care options. Take the time to explain the situation, avoid jargon in a slow and careful way to provide knowledge. Show empathy, even if you're busy. And finally, offer a clear summary of the plan going forward and the next steps to be taken. It's vital to check understanding. Between 40 and 80% of medical information provided by healthcare professionals is immediately forgotten. People given more information tend to recall less. This poor retention might be to do with how things are explained, for example, if medical terminology or jargon is used. It also might be about the method of communication, for example, whether things are written down or not. Or it might be due to patient factors such as high levels of anxiety or distress, pain, educational background or cultural differences. You can check someone's understanding in the moment very easily by asking them to summarise back for you what you've just said. Be honest about why you're doing this. Say something like, I just want to check I've explained this in a way that makes sense to you. Can you give me a quick summary of the main points from what I've just said? If someone can't do this, it should be a cue that more thought is needed about you can have these complex conversations. You should check if the person has remembered the key parts of this information after a delay, bearing in mind principles of the Mental Capacity Act. Most people, patients and families, will benefit from you using written summaries, visual aids or other strategies depending on their level of understanding. There are lots of easy read materials online that may be useful to look at. It may also be helpful to work collaboratively with other professionals who specialise in working with people with communication or cognitive problems such as speech and language therapy or clinical or neuropsychology. There may be ethical dilemmas and disagreements, for example if more intensive or invasive treatment is not thought to be appropriate due to frailty or comorbidities. These conversations may generate strong emotional responses from both patients and their families. You should be prepared for anger, distress and challenging questions that might be difficult to absorb or respond to. A calm, compassionate and containing approach in the short term will go a long way to helping people process their emotional responses in the longer term. Take care of yourselves and your colleagues as much as you can. Finally, remember that people often value the human elements of these difficult conversations. They will remember how you made them feel. Draw on your professional knowledge and skills, but remember to be yourself. Sit down, take your time, use a measured pace and tone. Use silences to allow people to process information and acknowledge how difficult you know this must be for everyone involved. You have a lot of valuable transferable skills that you can draw on to help make these difficult conversations as useful as possible while delivering high quality and compassionate treatment and end of life care.